Hi, I'm still Jeremy and I want to go over some Amtrak questions and answers. Just some basics about what Amtrak is, how it works, what a ride aboard Amtrak is like, and how to get the most out of your trip. Question number one, where does Amtrak go? Here's a map of all Amtrak routes that connect most major cities in the continental United States. As you can see, eastern cities like New York, Boston, and Washington DC are especially well served, as is Chicago and Los Angeles. Amtrak routes extend all the way down to Miami, up to Seattle, and through Louisiana and Texas. Does Amtrak go to Canada? Yes, a little. The Amtrak Cascades line goes between Eugene, Oregon and Vancouver, stopping at Portland and Seattle, among other places. Then the Maple Leaf runs between New York City and Toronto, with several stops along the way. And finally, the Adirondack links New York City with Montreal. Does Amtrak go to Alaska? No. The best you could do is take Canadian trains as far as Prince Rupert, but you can't get from the lower 48 to Alaska by train. There are some trains in Alaska, but they aren't Amtrak, although I have ridden them and I definitely recommend them. Does Amtrak go to Nashville? No, oddly. Amtrak has virtually no presence in Tennessee, although it does go through Memphis. The best you can do for Nashville is to get a bus from Chicago or Indianapolis or St. Louis or Birmingham, since Greyhound and Amtrak have an agreement. This is true as of mid-2020, and Amtrak has talked about a new train route serving Nashville in the future. I hope so. Who owns Amtrak? Basically, the US government does. Amtrak was established in 1971 to bring together several struggling smaller private lines. At the time, it was widely assumed that within a few years, train travel in the US would quietly disappear altogether. Well, the fact is, Amadi, that within five to seven years from the calculations we had made, there would be practically no railroad passenger service left in this country. But it continues today, obviously, and is meant to be a money-making company, although it does get government subsidies, including some from states who cooperate local lines. Who rides Amtrak? People ride Amtrak trains for two basic reasons, for transportation and for fun. Especially in the Northeast, using Amtrak to get between the big cities is a more mundane method of transport. On other lines, especially longer lines and those out west, Amtrak is not only a way to get around, but is an adventure unto itself. I've met people who use Amtrak in conjunction with airlines just for getting back and forth across America. The airlines are quicker, and Amtrak trains are more fun, so there's a balance. Basically, people who ride Amtrak get to enjoy the exciting experience of moving steadily through the American landscape, whether on a multi-day journey or a quick two-hour jaunt. How much does a ticket cost? They can be pretty cheap or quite expensive. It depends on the type of seat you want, the type of private bedroom compartment you want, if any, and add-ons like meals and special luggage and things. And there are discounts for seniors and military, plus occasional deals. Also, prices can change depending on when you book and when you're traveling, so it's impossible to give a simple answer to this question. We can look at a couple examples, though. A trip from New York to Washington, D.C. a month from today takes three and a half hours, and there are several trains that serve these stations. You can get a coach seat for $78, $98, or $192 on some routes. The price differences being different change and cancellation rules, which I'll go over next. You can also get a business class seat for $153. On other trains to those same stations, the prices are cheaper. $54.98 or $192 for coach, and only $109 for business class. Some trains only offer coach seats. Food would be extra for all of these passengers. One route, Acela, also has something called first class seats, which are more expensive but come with free meals and drinks. Let's look quickly at a longer route. The Southwest Chief links Chicago and Los Angeles. The only type of seat on this train, and all long distance trains, is coach. The fares, in this example, are $146 or more if you want flexible options for changing your ticket later. If you want a private bedroom, there are different options. A Superliner roomette is $604, a family bedroom is $1,040, and a Superliner bedroom is $942. The room itself is the expensive part. In the case of the Superliner Roomette, you pay $372 for the room, and then each passenger, either one or two for this size room, pays $232. So adding a second passenger to this example makes it more reasonable if split two ways. Keep in mind that this route takes 43 hours at least, and if you stay in any private room, all your meals are included. 
When you factor in the price you'd pay for, say, driving from Chicago to LA, staying in hotels, eating along the way, etc., then an Amtrak bedroom doesn't seem so bad. I think so, anyway. Plus, you get to watch the scenery go by without the hassle of driving yourself with the chaos of airports and rude flight attendants. Yeah, I said it. Kids ride Amtrak cheaper, and add-ons can increase the amount you pay. We'll talk about some of those in a little bit. Are Amtrak tickets refundable? It depends on the ticket you buy. Coach seats have three price levels for the same exact seat, saver, value, and flexible. All are 100% refundable within 24 hours of purchase. After 24 hours, the cheapest saver is not changeable or refundable. The money is gone. The middle coach seat value is 100% refundable until 14 days before the trip. After that, you can only get 75% back. Flexible coach seats do offer 100% refunds anytime. Business class seats are also 100% refundable anytime. Premium Amtrak tickets mean all private rooms plus a cell of first class seats. Private overnight rooms only offer a 75% refund until 14 days before the trip. After that, it's still 75%, but you can't get the cash back, only a voucher for future travel. A cell of first class seats are 100% refundable at any time. Can Amtrak tickets be changed? The system for changes to Amtrak tickets is similar. The cheapest coach seats, Saver, only allow changes within 24 hours of purchase. The middle, Value, charges a 15% fee for changes within 14 days of travel. All other seat options and private rooms offer free changes anytime. Why is Amtrak so expensive? Well, you haul big trains full of people and equipment around the country and see how much you have to pay. Actually, the ease and fun of train travel, I think, make Amtrak prices pretty reasonable. You're only paying really big money if you travel in a private compartment overnight, and even then your delicious meals are all included and the scenery is spectacular, and you can split the room price if you're traveling with someone. You can travel cross-country very cheaply if you're fine with sleeping in a coach seat and eating simple cafe meals or bringing your own food. And many people do that. Amtrak is as cheap or as expensive as you want it to be, depending on what comfort and amenities interest you. Are Amtrak trains usually on time? Uh, usually. Amtrak considers a train late if it's 10 minutes behind schedule for short routes or 30 minutes behind for longer routes. Several routes used to frequently be late, but most have improved dramatically. Most Amtrak trains operate on tracks owned by freight companies, and Amtrak trains are supposed to be given priority. Some investigations into whether or not this priority was actually being given resulted in new regulations in 2008, after which, to cite one of many examples, the Missouri River Runner between Kansas City and St. Louis improved from 11% on time to 95% on time. Of course, things can happen and delays are a part of Amtrak. Your train shouldn't be too late, if at all but you might want to refrain from just assuming that you'll be arriving at some exact minute, unlike the reliable trains in some other places, <coughs> Japan. Which Amtrak station is closest to me? You can check Amtrak's website for a nice national map of its routes in red, including all stations, plus connecting bus routes in green that operate in conjunction with the trains. There's a nice color PDF as well as an interactive map you can zoom into. Links to these are in the description. When should I arrive at the station? Amtrak says to arrive 30 minutes before departure time or earlier if you need special help like assistance with bags. If you're taking your car on auto train, you should arrive two hours before departure. The arrival and departure times for your station are part of the published schedule, so you know when to expect your train. Busy stations will have long lines, of course, and as we just saw, trains can be late. If yours is, the train may stop at your station for less time than planned. But if you're there where you're supposed to be, the train won't leave without you. Anyway, try to arrive about 30 minutes before you're due to leave. How much baggage can I take on Amtrak? Each passenger can bring four items, or five if you're traveling with an infant and have an extra item like a stroller. The four items are what Amtrak calls two personal items, which must be less than 25 pounds each, and two carry-ons no more than 50 pounds each. There are size limitations too. As with airlines, the Amtrak staff may not be super stringent in measuring and weighing your bags under normal circumstances. They can't ask you to repack your bags if one is heavier than 50 pounds, though. Also, you can pay $20 each for up to two bags over the four bag limit, or you can check two bags for free if it's available on your train. What Amtrak trains have Wi-Fi? Most of them do. Presumably this will change in the future, but as of this video, not all Amtrak routes have Wi-Fi. 
It's easier to show the ones without Wi-Fi on a map. As of mid-2020, these routes do not have Wi-Fi. All these others do. Amtrak just offers Wi-Fi from carriers as it passes through the land, so it can't really help with technical issues. They also ask that you refrain from huge downloads and things like that. Maybe one day in the future that won't be an issue either, and this part of this video will seem very quaint and old-fashioned indeed. Also, some stations have Wi-Fi service as well. Does Amtrak have outlets? Yes, power outlets are easy to find on Amtrak trains. Even coach seats have outlets, as do the private bedrooms. Note that on a recent trip I took in a Superliner roomette, there was only one outlet for the entire compartment. But it worked. Power outlets can also be found in the observation car if your train has one. By the way, I made a whole video about Amtrak observation cars, so watch that if you're interested. The link is in the description. What Amtrak trains allow bikes? You can take a bicycle 50 pounds or less on some Amtrak trains for a price. There are two ways to do it, depending on the train. Either you check your bicycle and it gets transported in the baggage car, or you carry it on and put it on a rack in the passenger car yourself. To see if a certain route has either of these, and if so which, check the Amtrak website. Like everything else in this video, this can and does change. There are some curiosities about bringing your bike on Amtrak. Like on the Empire Builder from Portland to Spokane, you have to box your bike. On other routes, you don't have to, but you can if you want, if it's a checked bicycle system. On the Vermonter, you have to remove the front wheel. On the Downeaster, you have to hook your bike to the side of the train to pedal and help the conductor power from station to station. Just kidding. It's voluntary. It usually costs about $20 to take a bicycle. Sometimes the service is sold out or unavailable. When buying your ticket on the Amtrak website, you can see if it's available for you or not. Does Amtrak allow dogs or other pets? Any company that doesn't like dogs is no friend of mine. And cats exist as well. Amtrak allows dogs and cats and carriers up to 20 pounds combined on most of its routes, although it can be a hassle. Except for service animals, only five pets total are allowed on trains, so check the website when you book a ticket. Pets can only ride if your total journey, including transfers, is seven hours or less. You can't have a pet in a sleeper compartment, and you can't take it to the dining car. Each passenger can only bring one pet, and the pet must be with you at all times. It costs $26 per pet. Can I ride Amtrak with a baby? Well, Amtrak no longer gives out babies to passengers, but you can bring your own. Can I ride Amtrak with a baby? Who wrote that question? I guess I did. Anyway, yes, infants and toddlers and everyone can ride Amtrak. An infant two years or younger rides free and must be accompanied by an adult 18 or over. The infant can ride in your lap and can even occupy a seat if nobody else is using it. An additional infant must have a separate paid-for ticket at the child fair. A kid from 2 to 12 years old rides at the child fair, which is half the price of an adult. Any additional child has to have a ticket at the adult fair. When you book tickets on the Amtrak website, you enter the ages of the passengers and it automatically figures out the prices for you. Do Amtrak trains have bathrooms? Yes, of course. Bathrooms are in most cars, often at either end or, in the case of double-decker superliner trains, on the bottom level or on both levels, depending on the car. Showers are also available on longer routes. There are wheelchair-accessible bathrooms as well. Actually, wheelchair-accessible bedrooms on longer trains have their own private bathrooms. Which Amtrak trains have bedrooms? Any Amtrak train that travels overnight has bedroom accommodations. Few liner trains, which are ones that go to New York City, are single level and have four types of accommodation. Superliner trains, which are overnight trains not stopping at New York, have five types. Roomettes are the smallest, bedrooms have private toilet and shower facilities, and superliner family bedrooms are good for two adults and two children and use shared facilities. You can get two bedrooms with the wall removed to make a so-called bedroom suite, and all overnight trains have accessible bedrooms big enough for a wheelchair and two adults. On other daytime routes, there are only seats. I did a whole video all about the Superliner Roomette if you want to see that. The link is in the description. Does Amtrak have a dining car? Well, some do. Again, it's only the long-distance overnight trains that have a dedicated dining car. All of these routes used to have traditional dining service, with tablecloths and freshly cooked hot meals and everything. Now, as of this video, only these do. These others that used to have traditional dining changed in 2019 to flexible dining. 
which is a less formal dining car that has prepackaged heated meals that you can eat there or back in your sleeper car. All Amtrak trains, except for these four, have cafes, which offer some pretty nice but simple foods as well. Acela trains between Washington DC and New York don't have a dining car, but have the usual cafe for everyone and free meals at your seat for first class passengers. I did a whole separate video about dining on Amtrak too, which I'll link to in the description. Can you bring food on Amtrak? Yes, you can. Just don't eat it in the dining car. You can eat it at your seat or in your private sleeper compartment. If you're in a private sleeper, you can drink your own alcohol too. Otherwise, you're supposed to buy it from the cafe. Can Amtrak run in the snow? Yes, they can and do. Most snowfall isn't really a big problem for Amtrak trains, although ice can certainly cause big delays. Tracks and weather are monitored when there's a problem, although since freight trains use most of the same tracks, a delay in one of them can cause delays for Amtrak as well. Can Amtrak ship my car? They can on one route, Auto Train, which goes between Washington DC and Orlando, Florida, with several stops in between. You pay a fare as normal, and then you pay $208 for a car, or $146 for a motorcycle. You can also pay extra to be offloaded earlier. Again, these prices are true as of now, but check the Amtrak website to get the real price for you, because it can change. Will Amtrak survive? Who knows? I certainly think so. Ridership, surprisingly, does trend upwards. There are political debates about giving Amtrak financial aid, with a very clear and simple message to our House Republican colleagues. Reject the House approach and don't shortchange our railroads. I beseech this House of Representatives to be financially responsible by supporting my amendment that eliminates federal government operating subsidies of Amtrak. But the Northeast routes especially are vital transportation options for people. They're needed. I hope all the routes survive. In some places, they're actually proposing new routes and extensions. Amtrak is considering a proposal to expand rail service from Chicago to Toronto on a line that passes right through Kalamazoo. And if you can, this is why I recommend taking one of the longer routes with a sleeper car. Patronizing Amtrak not only helps the company and that service stay around, but it gives you a travel experience like no other. If you just want to quickly get from point A to point B, take a plane. If you want to settle in and see America from a seat or a sleeper car, pay the fare and take the train. So how do I buy Amtrak tickets? I've always done it right on the Amtrak website. It's fairly simple to use and tells you exactly what's available and what add-ons may be possible. Check the front page of the website too for special deals, like buy one get one free coach seats that can slash the price for two passengers even more. If you've taken Amtrak, let me know what you thought of it. And if you're planning a trip, let me know that too. Thanks for watching. Check out my other videos for travel tips, stories from my own travels, and my experiences as a type 1 diabetic wanderer. As always, see you on the rails.